Okay, this is a review section of some of the earlier lessons, le uh, Lesson 88 of the Course in Miracles. Okay, so review of Lesson 75, The Light Has Come. In choosing salvation rather than attack, I merely choose to recognize what is already there. Now, I always love it when they use the word recognize, you know, um, in choosing salvation rather than attack. You know, salvation occurs when there's the recognition of that which is already here. So, for example, if I, you know, in this moment, let's say I could be in my thoughts or in my feelings, or I could be recognizing something that's before my thoughts or feelings. So, as, you know, I, I talk about the observer. So, you know, if, if, I, if I thought I was, if I was like, in this, in this moment, I could be fixated on a pen and think I am the pen, or I could recognize that I'm free, I'm the observer of the pen, and that the pen has no possibility of creating suffering. In fact, if I'm strongly in the observer, and not even interested in the pen, the pen disappears. It's not even there. So hence this word of recognition. You see, so in choosing salvation rather than attack, when I'm in, here's the thing, uh, I would say in terms of the course, in, in the way I, understand, I see it, is that when I'm in my ego, I'm in fear and separation and, and attack. Because as soon as I'm in my thoughts and my body and my and my suppressed feelings, then I feel separated. And when I feel separated, I feel like I need something, I'm not really connecting. And when I'm not really connected, I'll either be having thoughts of attacking myself for not feeling good enough, or I'll be attacking someone else for not giving me what I think I need, you see. So, so here we're choosing, choosing salvation would be a recognition of something that's already here. So. In this moment, I can either be in the hell of the thoughts and the feelings and feeling separated, or I could very quickly recognize there's a peace or a serenity or a stillness. So I always love this word recognize. It's like if you're in hell, you know, you could, you could recognize heaven within one split second. It's just a, it's a kind of a, a shift. Also, remember, um, I'm sort of cutting in on St. Francis. One of uh, St. Francis's famous quotes is what you're looking for is where you're looking from. What you're looking for is... So if people, when people are in their ego, they're always looking for something outside of themselves to get to feel better. But, you know, if you take St. Francis, what you're looking for is the place you're looking from. So before you're thinking, there's a place before that, that you're looking at the thinking, which is not the thinking, and that's what you're really looking for. You're not looking, you don't want to be in your thinking looking for something outside of you to, to, to do it. So then you recognize this thing that you really are looking for, in this place of uh, limitless uh, presence. So salvation is a decision made already. Attack and grievances are not there to choose. Well, when you're, when you're in salvation, uh, when you're in the observer, let's say, or in the stillness, then you cannot be in both places at the same time. So that is why I always choose between truth and illusion, between what is there and what is not. The light has come, I can but choose the light, for it has no alternative. Now he here's the thing, <clears throat> in the course talks about illusions, <clears throat> or you could say darkness or fear and separation. Now, here's the thing to understand. Why does the Course, in my view, call this whole world illusory? Is because, I would say, in terms of the Course, the only truth is true, and anything that is not truth is not real, or is an illusion. What does that mean? Is the, the way to understand it, is to understand the concept of light and darkness. Now, darkness is not, is not a reality, it's an absence of light. Yeah. Like, as soon as you switch the light on, darkness is realized that it doesn't exist. It's not like a physical substance or a reality. So really, when one experiences darkness, it's really the experience of no light. 
because only light is real and shadows and darkness are not real. Even though when you're in the darkness you can say, well, I am dark, but actually that's not a reality. So that, that's the whole thing of realizing darkness does not exist, only light. It has replaced the darkness and the darkness has gone. Of course, you've switched up the light bulb on. And the light is not out there, it's not looking for a light out, the light's inside. So these would prove useful forms for specific application of this idea. <clears throat> this cannot show me darkness, for the light has come. So, let's say someone had gone through a relationship breakup. So, this breakup cannot show me darkness, for the light has come. And the light will come from within, not, not from without. Or, or you could use it that way, it's another frame. The light is in you, the light in you is all that I would see. Now, I think this can be confused if you're in addiction, you know. It's not like the donut is the light, or the, the alcohol bottle is the light. Um, so that, that would be, you know, an addict might get confused by that lesson. But actually, if you see the, the light is in you, and is all that I would see. You're, you're sort of seeing uh, the, pre, you know, the, the 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 divinity, which is past the form. Um, so be beyond the body and the thoughts, there is a light, and you want to see that light. You don't want to see, uh, if you're an addiction, you don't want to see the the form. You don't want to see the bottle as being the light. But beyond the bottle, there is the light, and that's the light you want to see. Or if you're fixated with George Clooney then, you know, you don't want to see George as the light, you want to see the light beyond George, you know, uh, you're going to connect to that. <clears throat> oh, or you keep see anyway. Um, so I'd see, uh, I would see in this only what is there. Okay, so the next, uh, the next uh, review is for lesson um, 76. I am under no laws but God's. This is one of my favourite lessons, actually. It was very powerful, and we're starting to get into really <coughs> some of the why the Course in Miracles can do more than many other spiritual uh, spiritual paths. Because this is extremely powerful. Is that I'm under no laws but God's. Here is the perfect statement of my freedom. I'm under no laws but God's. I am constantly tempted to make up other laws and give them power over me. Now here's the thing about belief systems. All the, all the beliefs that we buy as a child from our parents, all the belief systems you buy from school, all the belief systems you buy from society, all the belief systems you buy from collective, the, the collective consciousness of humanity, is that um, uh, yeah, as soon as you believe them, uh, they seem to become real for you. It's like, if I believe there's not enough money to earn a living, or, you know, the world is doomed, if I have those as beliefs, they become my reality, my inner, my inner reality and landscape. And they also have a metaphysical thing of attracting situations which tend to reinforce that, you see. So, hence, um, hence um, that's the temptation to go into your thoughts and your beliefs. And if you release that, you can release any kind of uh, belief and you'll find that actually your whole you'll start to get to a high vibration where miracles and good things and, and you're guided by a deeper intuition start to happen so hence the thing of releasing your, your beliefs so I suffer only because of my belief in them so all suffering is because of beliefs in your thinking and if you were to release all your beliefs you'd be in this kind of limitless presence and intuition that would spontaneously guide your life from the present moment. They have no real effect on me at all. I am perfectly free of all effects, of all laws save God's, and His are the laws of freedom. For specific forms in applying this idea, these would be useful. My perception of this shows me I believe in laws that do not exist. So my perception of this show. Let, let's say, um, okay, let's say, um, I was trying to think, you know, I always think like women would like George Clooney. Uh, I mean, uh, and, 
And I have to sort of think of what's, what's the current male thing that they're fixated with. Uh, what a Ryan Gosling. Pardon? Ryan Gosling. Is, is, that a, is that a woman? Ryan no, it's, a, it's an actor. It's a male it's a, actor? Yeah, it's a male actor. Would you agree, Ryan Gosling what? over George Clooney? Oh, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Ryan, that's the new one, yeah. yeah. I'm, a pro, I'm, a, I'm out of date. Totally with all of these things. Right. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Gosling. I don't know. I'm too old for that one. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, uh, all right. So, anyway, Ryan Gosling, George. George. So, my perception of uh, Ryan Gosling, <laughs> my perception, uh, shows me I believe in law. My per no, my perception that Ryan Gosling will fix me. That's right. My perception that Ryan Gosling will fix me shows me I believe in laws that do not exist. Mm. Yeah. So that's how you do it with, with Ryan Gosling. Or, or it could be like, you know, a Michael Kors handbag. Uh. <laughs> my perception that a Michael Kors handbag will fix my life shows me I believe in laws that do not exist. Or another one is, I see only the laws of God at work in this. Okay. I see only the laws of God. Well, the, law, the laws of God will be, um, will be freedom. And so there wouldn't be any type of bondage or I need Ryan Gosling to, to, to fix me. Okay. So, so let me allow God's laws to work in this and not my own. So if you're in any kind of negative, addictive or negative thought pattern, let me allow God's laws to work in this and not my own. So those would be different applications for how to use that lesson.